Jesus, man. Last year we found two people in suitcases because their friends panicked, didn't know what to do with bodies, and folded these chicks in both cases. Folded the chicks up in suitcases and dumped them. This is Detective Mike Mellis. He doesn't know it yet, but the missing person case he's currently investigating will end with that same missing person's body being discovered in a suitcase that was dumped at the side of the freeway. Mike Mellis, whom I interviewed for this video, wants to emphasize that the footage you're about to watch is an interview, not an interrogation. He makes a clear distinction here because the man he's interviewing, David Haggard, isn't yet the primary suspect, just a person of interest. Let's start at the beginning. This is Jamie Haggard. She lived with David, her half-brother, and her boyfriend. Not the same person, she lived with two separate men. Her boyfriend was physically abusive, and Jamie herself was a habitual drug user. So when she was reported missing by her father, the police naturally turned to two suspects, Jamie's abusive boyfriend and drugs. The problem was that Jamie's boyfriend was in jail at the time that Jamie disappeared, so, the detectives turned to the next closest person to Jamie, and that would be David. David was questioned and briefly investigated. Within that process, detectives noticed a number of red flags. According to Detective Mellis, the first red flag was a text message. David told the detectives that one morning, after coming back from being out all night, Jamie was simply gone, and some of her possessions were missing. David was not worried, though because their sister, Stephanie, had received a text message from Jamie stating that Jamie was fine and just taking some time to heal. The detectives naturally sought out Stephanie to review the text message. Hello, it's your sister Jamie, and I didn't think it was fair of me to have only talked to Carly and David when there is all this worry on Facebook. But I am fine. Well, going to be anyways. I am taking this time to get better. I mean, one of my friends went to jail, and I was about to pick up another one from jail. And that's the least of my problems. But all in all, pretty screwed up. The game got me screwed up. I don't have a phone, it's broken, but don't worry. I will be back after I'm well. Tell mom I love her and will tell her everything when I return. Also, give my babies love for me and I can hear dad already. Why didn't you tell her to call me? Just tell him it's like when I got pregnant, not with one but two, and I needed big David to help me set him down. Well, it's kind of the, I am pretty screwed up, and need some time to myself before I tell him just how screwed up I have been. Love you, Stephanie, and sorry for everything. This message was suspicious to the detectives, and not just because of the content. The odd thing is that Jamie would text this sort of message to Stephanie, but no one else. And Stephanie and Jamie had been estranged for years. The detectives then refocused on David, the last person who saw Jamie, they brought him to the police station for a polygraph test. Let's see if they can get to the bottom of this. All right, David, so detectives are going to join us here for a minute. So um, I went through my, my chart. You didn't pass your test today. Okay. Uh, 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 this is what my computer algorithm is telling me. Okay. Um, this man. That means probable deception indicated, meaning that um, there's indications that you've not been truthful with us. Okay? Um, how do you read this thing? How do you read it? They don't understand what this number thing. Well, you, really, the only thing you really need to focus it on is this where it says probable deception ind indicated. That's the computer algorithm. What's this line here? That's just where I want to read. Um, yeah, I would expect to see you down over on this side if you were being truthful with me. Okay, in the middle is more of the just totally plugging it out here, stuff filled. Yeah, so you didn't pass your test. So what that leads me to believe is that there's some information that you've not told us about that we need to try to get covered up here or get cleared up. All right. Obviously, um, the police are out here digging into this thing. We're doing everything we can to to you know get your sister found. Um, you haven't conclusively passed your test. That's a concern to us. That was a concern to mine to begin with. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, and why was it such a big concern to you? Because I told you I already felt guilty. I, I carried the guilt. I okay. Dreaming that, that I'm guilty, whatever happened to her is my fault and, and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Okay. Well, these questions, that's specifically why I didn't ask you, are you responsible for her disappearance? Because you 
told me that you felt responsible for it. I, so, didn't, go, I didn't go that route, okay? Yeah, but you also said that, that this, this... I asked very specific, I asked very specific questions. Do you know where she's currently located? Have you lied to the police regarding right, her disappearance? Right, right. Well, that's not what your body's telling us. Your body's telling us something completely different, okay? And so what we have to do is is rely on, on what we're seeing here, what your body is providing to us. A mouth can say one thing, the body tells the truth, and that's the way that right, I approach it. Right. So I, I feel very comfortably that there's more to the story, there's something that you're concerned about that you're not disclosing at this point. Um, and, you know, we're here, we're here to try to get this thing resolved, obviously, okay? You're down here for a reason. Um, you know, there's been some suspicious things that have gone on, you know, since her disappearance. Um, I think that there's a lot more to it that, that you're holding back on at this point, but this isn't the time to do that. This is the time to, to, to deal with it. Let's get your sister back. Um, let's move forward with this investigation. Let's bring her home, you know. Despite what everybody in her social world thinks, it's her family that matters including you, including your father, whatever his relationship with you or her are, they have a right to get their daughter back, whether her life was fucked up If you, you know, mother, suspect foul play, I'd go to Scott. I don't know anything else. I told you guys that. I don't know anything. Like I said, if I was given a test about Jamie's disappearance, having no involvement whatsoever, I wouldn't completely passed the test. You don't even know Jimmy, so you would have passed. Yeah. Just like the Green Precisely. River Killer guy. He but fucking didn't, they asked him the wrong questions or some shit. And he fucking, just because they didn't know any of the victims. That's why he passed his first test. Don't believe what you see in the yeah. paper about the Green River I'm not going to fucking go through this with you guys. I, I didn't do anything to my sister. I haven't done anything to my sister. I don't know where she's at. If I did, I would tell you. Bottom line. Bottom line. My life is pretty fucked up, and that's why I didn't want to take this test to begin with. But other than that, I wouldn't hurt my sister. I wouldn't hurt her. I wouldn't hurt her or my fucking children. You can ask any of my, my, my family history. I got a lot of fucking family. You can ask them all about I it. I had plenty of men tell me that they wouldn't hurt somebody, and they didn't. But they ended up being involved in disposing of a body. I didn't dispose of no bodies either, sir. I'm not that way. What were you doing burning all that stuff out in your yard for the last couple of weeks? We've been burning freaking... Uh, I mean, the, just to, I'm not accusing you. Just tell me what it was. What were you burning? Uh, the mulch and shit. There's all kinds of shit around the fucking property. We've been burning trash, all kinds of crap. There's all kinds of crap in that house. We've been trying to... Me and Carly have been trying to get our leg up. So we're just trying to... I mean, Jason, we thought we were going to be gone. We thought Jason was going to be gone for a minute. So we're going to freaking try to get in with, get with the owner. That was it. Yeah. yeah. And... What was reburied in the hole? Anything? Garbage? Anything? There's garbage. There's all kinds of shit. There's and that whole property you buried. Fucking. Uh, there's axles. There's all kinds of shit in that fucking property. He had a stupid ass pump. I mean, uh, uh, not a pump, but a uh, fucking pond that he's gonna put in. It was dumb. Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody wants a fucking pond. And it didn't just get buried or covered up in one night. It's fucking over a duration of time. Okay. Bunch of garbage burns in that hole. I mean, it's bunch of wood. Yeah. So, if she's found, and if she's found fairly quickly, and if she's deceased, the medical examiner will absolutely be able to tell us how she died. So, whether it was an overdose, or violence, or whatever, whether she's found in your backyard, or whether she's found buried out in Big Fin Hill Park, or fucking in Little Lake Washington, if she's found quickly, we'll be able to say it. And I'll say it, man. Her lifestyle absolutely leads to the suspicion that she fucking OD and people freaked out and didn't know what to do. And yes, that can be family members. Yes, that can cause a, a failure of a polygraph or a non-passing of a polygraph, polygraph rather. Yeah, but I don't know your you, I don't know her, but I know men in your position that have been under suspicion due to circumstances and they've denied and denied and denied and then, but in the, in the end, fucking truth comes out one way or the other. And, I haven't done anything, so... You, you know, let's just face the legal side of this thing. What's the crime of disposing of a woman that ODs? I have no idea. It's fucking gross misdemeanors. I, I have no idea, it. sir. So I, I'm telling you that because I don't want you or anybody else overly freaked out about an OD death and guys panicked and got rid of the body. Because it's a fucking gross misdemeanor at worst if anybody even gets charged. So... I just want to make sure that's clear. We're not investigating 
you know, some felony crime, if, if, the, if in fact she just died through her lifestyle, OD, you know, she's got a history of that clearly. You guys keep saying she's dead. You guys know something that I don't know? Like, I don't even know, know that she's dead. Well, we do know a lot of things about her behaviors and issues that lead us to believe that she's no longer with us. Well, I hope the hell she calls her mother right now. Says, Mom, I have been. I have been out. I've been in fucking rehab. Of course, that's not true either because she's well, well past the blackout periods of being rehab. So in my gut, I believe that uh, she's dead, either by someone else's hand or she's fucking OD. And now it's a recovery. In fact, that's why we're all out at your house today. You know, we don't, we're not convinced she's out there. Sure as hell are going to check it. We're going to be checking it with heavy equipment. We're going to be doing it with the cadaver dogs. We're going to be we're going to be covering that base today, 100. percent And if she is found out there, somebody's got some explaining to do. And that explanation, if true, that she OD, fucking better come out without a lot of pressure from the police. And I just come out so we can then do believe it. Dave, for example. Six months, let's say, let's say her fucking body's found six months from now, and the medical examiner can't determine her cause of death right away. They ultimately will, but, and then six months from now, you say, okay, well, fuck, back in July, I uh, was scared to admit that she died of an OD. It's going to be very tough to prove it was an OD at that point. If she fucking died from some fucked up reason, or, you know, any other cause that happened around that home and somebody panicked and got rid of her and fucking put it out there. Let's get her back home, let the medical examiner look at her. I have nothing to do with any disappearance or anything that has happened to my sister. None. Then you should have passed this polygraph. I should have passed this. Detectives would later find that David had reported to friends intense anxiety regarding this test. One friend said that David had reported to him that he wanted to die for fear of failing the polygraph test. Another reported roughly the same statement, citing that David said he was afraid of going to jail. I'm going to fail that polygraph test. I'm going to hang myself. I'm not going to jail. I would rather die. One friend responded to David's concern by saying, You'll be fine because you don't have anything to do with Jamie missing. To which David responded, I'm not going to pass the test. Said friend recounted that response being odd. Later, despite failing the polygraph test, David would tell friends that he had passed it. Absolutely, and guilty knowledge, or, or excuse me, guilty feelings about right. lifestyles doesn't affect polygraph. It's a black and white issue. No, it isn't. Uh, Bullshit. Just hey, it is. Man. We've been doing this for fucking years. No, just what was a specific you, question? You'd be able to bring it in the court of law if it was. No, it's not. No, I'm not even going to go through this, man. I have nothing to do with my sister. Nothing to do with her disappearing whatsoever, man. Where, where, I love her to death. Where, where the fuck is she? I don't know where she's at. I don't know where she's at. I don't know what the last six months of lifestyle she's taking on with all these brown people. I don't know the Mexicans that she's been hanging out with. I don't know any of that shit. In the last two months, I fucking cut her off pretty much. Is her purse at your house? No. Is her phone at your house? No. No, the cops know that I was on. I was on her. I'm on her voicemail because I had her phone when 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 uh, the cops to call the cops on Jason when they arrested Jason. The, the big the big officer who was there today. He even knows. He, he told my dad that you know he had his he had her phone. I was walking around with her phone for like two hours. Mm -hmm. She had no voicemail, so I put one on there for me. I mean, on her there on there for her. Um. What is at your house that belongs to her right now? All of her clothes and shit? A lot of her stuff is in that carport. It's in the carport and uh, I don't know if she thinks it's throughout the house, I guess. I don't know whatever's in Jason's room. Sorry, I'm going to communicate with my uh, partners out of your house right now.
When was the last time? Let's make be very formal. I know you've been asked this question before, but I haven't heard it straight from you. When was the last time you physically saw her? Uh, the morning that she came back. It was like Thursday, I guess. The ninth, eighth, ninth. Mm -hmm. And did you then talk to her on the phone after that? Yeah, I talked to her on the phone now. It was July. No, what time? June. June. Yeah. And is that the same time frame that, uh, what's his name, it was Daly that was supposed to come back to your house from jail? No, he was coming the next day or something. And the understanding was, if I got it right, tell me if I'm wrong, she was supposed to go pick him up? She was going to pick him up, yeah. Okay, and, and do you believe that ever happened? No, he showed up, no, he showed up that morning. How did he get there? You know? Uh, somebody picked him up. Did he say specifically who picked him up? No. Was he in a car or? Yeah, he was in like a uh, SUV type car, I guess. Was he pissed that she didn't show up? Or did, did he mention it? Or? Uh, yeah, he was just like, well, that's weird. He was, I thought she'd pick me up. And then uh, he asked to borrow a bicycle. I said, I didn't have one for him to borrow. And he, uh, I said, what about your ride? He goes, oh, they have to go to work or some shit. And then he didn't show, and they took off, and we didn't hear from him. At all for like five days, six days, he just showed up at my house asking where James at. And I told him, I thought she was with you. Just worried that, you know, she's with him or with whoever else. She doesn't brown with. I don't even know any of those people. But he says, uh, I've been stuck. No phone, no ride, no nothing. Uh, was it legit? Did you, did you believe that she wasn't with him? Did he seem no, genuine? No, I thought... No. And where is he today? I have no idea. You know he's got a bunch of warrants out for him? Oh, I'm sure he does. He's a visitor. So where do you think he might be? Because, fuck, I mean, I might as well just snag up everybody I can. We're, we're doing this today. I have no idea. He hangs out with J-Dog and I have no idea, sir. What do you mean, Scott? I don't think, I don't know. Are they, are they tight? <laughs> I have no idea. No. I really don't know. So. On the day she's missing, she has her own cell phone, right? Yeah. And you got your own individual cell phone, right? Yeah. So. I didn't have a phone. Today's, you don't have a phone at all? I didn't have a phone at the time. Well, why not? I think my phone was broken or out of minutes or something. I mean, I, I had a phone, but it was just out of minutes or something. So whether a phone's out of minutes or not, you know, it communicates with the cell towers all around. Right. To, to give us GPS coordinates and more things. Right. Are. One of the things that we're doing today is uh, we served a um, search warrants on a variety of phone companies, including your phone, including Jamie's phone, including some other people's phones. And to me, I'm a tech guy, so this is just, why I, the reason I say this thing's gonna be done today and solved today is because we're gonna know where she's at today. We're gonna know who took her there. And we're gonna find her, dead or alive. And it's all, it's all gonna come from technology. Her phones are going to tell us exactly, her phone records are going to tell us exactly where she moved. But most importantly, we're going to compare her phone's movements with the movements of everybody else's phones. And it's not going to be too difficult to see the path plotted on a Google Earth map, which phones moved together between the 8th, 9th, and 10th of July. Yeah. Well, my phone probably was at the house the whole time. Well, I so maybe. Maybe that's the case. I guess sorry, we'll I didn't have a phone. We had to do the work so I can carry it with him. And then secondarily, the phone doesn't just talk to its cell tower in the area. The phone talks to whoever's a, a Wi-Fi connection, right? The router at your house, the router at your neighbor's house, maybe, if it tries to connect, the router at Starbucks. So nowadays, law enforcement has the advantage of just fucking nailing down the position of phones way better than we did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So those paths are going to tell us a lot about her and who was with her. And I, I don't have those records yet. I voted when we were having a meeting yesterday about this case. I voted to hold off on hitting your house with a search warrant until we have those records. But, you know, resources are resources and we needed to do it today. That's fine. We had the back of today. We were ready to do it. So, since I can only assume you're not being completely honest about things because of the um, polygraph that you did not pass, it's not personal, but I just, I believe you're holding something back. I know you're holding something back. 
And these things are all going to come out later, no matter what you say today. If you're not being honest with us right now, you're putting yourself in a hole because I'm afraid later on you're going to have to backtrack and kind of say, well, okay, this is really the truth a month or two or a week or a year from now, and it's going to be unbelievable. You know, if you're caught in a lie, you're caught in a lie. You can't backtrack from that later on. I came home. When I got home, there was a fire outside the slider grass door. It was, a, it, was a, it was it was put out. It wasn't totally put out. It was smoke on mm -hmm. I seen it. That raised suspicion to me. I didn't know what that was about. I've been thinking about that ever since this fucking investigation started taking off. What it was about? Other than that, I don't know anything else. Why is that relevant? Why do you think that's relevant? Because it was just because you guys keep asking for about that backyard and about why we buried or you know buried uh, what we buried and burned there. You know, it's just it's just weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's just it just seemed it seems like something I should say to you. Well, most guys would have a standard burn pile, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not going to burn next to the house. Yeah, you're not going to burn next to the house. So are you saying this is something different? Yeah, I just said it was. Yeah, it was weird. It was just weird. I was totally flabbergasted. It was in the it was in the hole that we had for for the the septic has been messed up there. So we we had dug out the trench line. That's how that whole yard got tore up mm -hmm. to begin with. Because the septic was fucked up. Septic or sewer? Uh, sewer. Yeah. Sewer was fucked up. The pipe was fucked up. So we had a, so we got uh, Joe to come in with a little mini. And we we had excavated a little line, you know, and stuff and fixed the pipe and whatever. But there were still issues with the draining or something, and so they had a little hole. It was outside the the uh, outside the window, you know, the slider there mm -hmm. that was fucking. And then the pond was over there, so I don't know what he was doing. That was my man Jason still, you know, he had this pond dug, and then he's saying something about the sector was messed up or whatever. But when I got there, I got there. That, like I said, there was just it was weird. Carly showed up right after me and. I even said something to her, you know, like, this is fucking, what's she burning right next to the house for, you know? She just kind of pissed me off, you know? I didn't think anything of it, though. Whose fire was it? I thought it was James. I thought Jamie got the fire. What day was that? That day. The day. Yeah, the day. The last time you saw her? Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. you confront her on it? Or did you not see her after that? No, I didn't see her. She wasn't there. No, that's what I was, I was pissed off about. The house was wide open. Fucking, here's this half fire, you know, was, like I said, it wasn't a fire, but it was smoking, you know, smoldering still. Was that the only time the fire had been at that particular location? Yeah. Yeah, why would there be one there? There's plenty of issue. Like, like, I mean, just because somebody digs a hole, it doesn't mean you put a fire there. Right. You know? So, I don't know, just, I'm just trying, trying to rack my head if there's anything else that I could be withholding from you, and that's the only thing that comes to mind. Well, you didn't pass the test for some reason. You're the only one that knows that. And I guess I can't emphasize enough that you, this isn't going to end, obviously. This isn't going to go away. I understand it's not going to go away, sir. You know, until yeah. the time that she calls her mother, which I, at this point, I, I think we're done with that. We're, we're in a recovery phase. You know, the judge authorized a, a search warrant for a body and evidence of murder or death. And so we're still proven differently. It's, it's murder, right? If it proves that she fucking OD'd like so many women and young men have been ODing lately around Seattle, then so be it. Jesus, man. Last year we found two fucking people in suitcases because their friends panicked, didn't know what the fuck to do with bodies, and folded these chicks in both cases. Folded the chicks up in suitcases and dumped them. One in SeaTac or one in SeaTac, one in fucking Kansas. Jesus Christ, just call us and say she fucking got too high and we fucking, you know what I'm saying? Just fucking deal with it. You don't uh, sweep it under a rug. You don't sweep a loved one's body under the rug and pretend like she's just fucking vanished because we're going to prove whether she's just vanished on her own or not. There's a certain point where people are going to understand that, that those with knowledge of Jamie's disappearance 
it's sort of natural for them to deny it and freak out for a while. But after a certain point, it, it goes from a natural denial to a kind of an evil intent or trying to protect themselves because of allegations of crime. Well, if, for example, David, you tell me right now that, oh, fuck, I don't know where she's at. Did you go and recover her today? The things that we would be telling her family, most importantly her mother and father, would be that uh, in the end, Dave helped solve his case. He was scared, he freaked out, but Dave helped solve his case. Compare that to three months from now when we find what's left of the remains, and the question remains in the air for her mother and father. I mean, this is family dynamics here. They're gonna fucking suspect you. And so it's almost like, get out in front of this fucking thing. They probably suspect me already. My dad does. Well, so I, I don't know the dynamics there in that family. It sounds like you got some issues with your, your father. I was closer to any of the kids than he ever was. Yeah. So fuck him. I didn't do shit. So whether, you, whether, you, whether there's respect there or not, they have a fucking right as parents. Yeah, they do. They know where the fuck their daughter yeah, is. Yeah, they do. We all have a right. I'd like to know, too. Yeah, so... Dude, this thing's just going to move forward no matter what. I understand that, sir. I don't know anything. You know something. You didn't pass your polygraph that every one of us in this room should have passed it, which would have been nothing. It doesn't matter that you're related to it. It doesn't matter that you're guilty about your lifestyle. Those questions were so specific. And that's why I love polygraph tests regarding cases like this is because they're nothing but specific. Jason wants to ask me in a pre-employment polygraph whether I stole something when I was a kid. I don't really care if he asks me that because I don't think that's going to be accurate and valid in, in my opinion. But when he asks me, was I, did I dispose of Jamie's body? I'm going to say no. I'm going to pass that test. No, he didn't want to take the polytherist the first time I came here because it was under meth. I mean, it's it's all kinds of demand, dynamics in there. I'm telling you right now, I don't know where my sister is. If I did, I would tell you. I would tell you. If she OD'd in front of me, I would tell you. I don't know. I don't know. Did you get into a fight with her on the last time you saw her? The, the, no, the, the, the day before we were fighting. Did it turn physical? No, not any more than no. Well, what does that mean? I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, freaking, it was physical at first, but I mean, I was just getting to the truth of the matter. I mean, I was just, I, I was, just, you know, on top of her, but it was nothing, there was no fucking violence or anything. The cops came there. I know that. And the cops checked her out, and I was fucking cleared. I didn't do anything to her. 24 hours later, though. 24 hours later, she wasn't at home. Right. She was gone all night. She was gone all night. I guess we'll find that out when we get the phone records today. Yeah, well, she, yeah, you will. You'll find that out. She's gone all fucking night. She didn't come in until the next morning. So, a couple things are obviously going to be dealt with. And here's, all, I'll just tell you our job. When I see your phone records and I see her phone records, uh, I suspect that I'm going to see some travel together. I think there's a good chance of that. I think it's going to prove that you're not telling the truth right by itself, and then we're going to have to do this all over again. Um, I'm a little late to this case to know why the fuck you're painting your truck and completely cleaning your truck out. So we, when we have the Washington State Crime Lab out searching your truck in about an hour, believe me, I've had cases where people have hosed their truck out, scrubbed with, God, they've used stone masonry cleaner in their truck, and this crime lab still found blood. You guys don't get where they should really clean. So all these things are happening today because we can't figure out what to do with you. So prove them right or prove them wrong. That's our job, isn't it? That's what you fucking pay us for. And by God, we're going to do it on this case. I don't care what her lifestyle was like. Nobody has a right to be fucking disposed of improperly or killed in a fight and then dumped up in fucking uh, Eastern Monroe or wherever the fuck she's at. Remember, your phone doesn't have to make a phone call to be talking to the tablets, right? Or a lawyer. Or charge me or something. 
I haven't done anything wrong. Do you look at my phone records? Do you check my truck? He's been clearing? Yeah. We're doing that too, Dave. Don't forget. Yeah. Our job is to clear people. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're certainly not going to wrangle into somebody yeah, in right. crime. Whatever. Where are you, a witness or a Whatever. suspect? Suspect in your eyes. Well, you're, you're something in our eyes. Mm -hmm. You know you're not under arrest, right? I haven't done anything to my sister. Do you understand you're not I'm under lawyer. arrest? I'm a lawyer. Okay. Well, let's, let's get out of here then. I hope you're right, Dave. I wasn't there. But in the end, if she's um, somewhere because she OD'd, I would assume that at this point you've got the message and you need to tell us. If she died under other circumstances, you know, it will come out. So we're going to take you back to the house. You can't go back to the inside the house until we're done. We're going to be there pretty much all day. Is there someplace else you'd like to go? No, wait, can I get my wallet? Or? Yeah, did. Let's say you're not under arrest. I know this is uncomfortable. Where's Scott at? We got other teams this dude at? doing other things. Listen, you've mentioned Scott a couple times, but you also just talked about a lawyer. Would you yeah. want to tell me about the story about Scott? Okay. No, I'm, I told you the story about Scott. Well, you, Scott needs to be checked. You're suspicious of Scott. Yeah, is really. Is there a reason? Because he's like fucking admitted that he's done something there. Tell me that story again. Now that uh, driving in the back seat of my car is a little difficult. He said when Jason came home, Jason came home out of jail. He was with Scott. Scott picked him up. They went and did some brown together. Natasha is a girl that just got out of out of feds. She's in an Oxford house or something in Seattle, I guess. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in Seattle. Uh, they had picked her up too, I guess. Jason says that it was him, Natasha, and Scott in his truck. And Jason said, what the fuck's going on in my house? Does Jason come home? He's like tripping out, like, you know, what's all this stuff? You know, Jamie's missing, supposedly. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Scott says, shut up, dude. You're going to get me in trouble. Don't worry about it. She's not at your house. She's been taken care of. He says this specifically to Specifically Jason. to Jason and, and Natasha. And Jason told you about that. Yes, yes. And he brought it up again last yesterday. And what was yesterday? Yesterday we're just he just he just said, dude, I think Scott did something with your sister, man. I'm sorry. Jason said that. Yeah. He goes, honestly, I don't think I don't think you've done anything, Dave. But I think Jason Scott I mean I think Scott's done something with your sister though. I know you're trying to be positive and optimistic, but I'm telling you, man, I think Scott done something with your sister. Have you spoken to Scott yourself face to face? Not about it, no. What's the story about rolling her sister up or something? You said that well, yeah, that was the, when he first started coming back around. You know, like he said he was arrested. You know, we checked that not to be true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just like he, just weird shit. Like he started coming around like the day before Jason got out and then and then talked, you know, I mean. Jamie's already gone, right? Yeah, Jamie's been gone and he, and then he starts talking like uh, he says that uh, he'd been in contact that she called him, which we don't think is true. You know, we're, we're like, you know, why would she call him? I and mean, it just doesn't seem... He doesn't, he doesn't add up, but I know Jamie was definitely afraid of him when he fucking came in and got his cut, and he kept asking for his cut, and he kept asking for his boots. Cut of cash or cut of no? His, 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 uh, his, his leather, his, his, uh, oh, his biker, right. yeah, yeah, he, he had his cut there, he needed mm -hmm. his cut. Um, brought up that it was valuable, you know, uh, she could have got money for it, you know, Jamie could have got money for it or whatever, you know, Carly didn't think that was, you know, what was up with that. You don't get your shit back? No, he stopped asking for it. And Jason said it's not there. I mean, it's in Jason's room, supposedly. You know? i never seen it. You know? i seen it one time when Jason, or when, yeah, when Jason was wearing it. But other than that, i never seen it. You know? But Jamie came out of the room saying, you know, he took his cut. They're coming, dude. The banditos are coming. And that's when I, you know, was telling you, or telling you guys in the car that I just was taking half of what she said with a grain of salt. And the rest of the half was just talking about bullshit. You know, Jamie, it's not even fucking banditos. It's Hell's Angels, these claims. You know? I mean, that was... I didn't think anything of it. Was he upset that she kept the cut in the room? Or kept the cut for him? No, he... He says that he never took the cut or he wouldn't be asking about it. But he was asking about it. When he first started coming around, I started asking, Hey, can I get my... Can I get my leather? Mm -hmm. And he calls it cut. Can I get my cut? 
and uh, it's got to be in Jason's room. And I said, hey, dude, just got to wait for Jason to come out. We're trying to figure out what's going on with Jason. I go, we don't want to fuck off his shit. It's his room, you know, let's leave it alone until he came back. Jason got out. He came. He asked for it, like I said, once more time, one more time. And, and the last few times he's been over, I haven't heard a goddamn thing about it. And that's what we brought up yesterday. It was like, why doesn't he ask him for his cut anymore? Jason's like, right? You know, I don't know. So you, what about this comment he made about rolling, rolling somebody up for a while? He just said that, he said, you know, I thought you meant, like, get off the carpet. I was like, no, I'd roll you up before I roll any of my, you know, that's my little sister, dude. What are you talking so about? So he's, like, just kind of implying that maybe you yeah, like, something to your sister? What's that? He's implying, he's implying that you like, I something? wanted something to be done with my sister, is what I took it as. Yeah. You know? He that's was like, yeah, he was, like, implying, like, well, I thought you were kind of serious, dog, you know? And, like, yeah. I mean, I mean, before, a few days, three or four days before any of this shit had happened, Jason and Jamie were in it in a fight, in an argument. Um, Jason was like, I can't handle this dog. You know, I can't, she's got to go. And I'm saying, well, I get her out, you know. And Scott's saying, I think it's the only right that the, you know, family member takes care of it. Or I'll take care of it. You know, and I never, I mean, just these things, if I reflect on back, you know, on reflect back on our conversation, it doesn't mean much at the time. Because we're just, all everybody's hyped, you know, amped up. Mm -hmm. But I think about it then, you know, like, what the hell were you talking about, dude? You know, like, the whole time the guy was talking about, you know, getting rid of her. And Jason says, she swears to God that she has a fuck, that he has a hatred towards women, you know. In his talk with me, Detective Mellis mentioned that most guilty suspects don't name names. At most, they cite a mystery person for plausible deniability. But here, David is actively pointing his finger at two individuals whom he knows to be innocent. He's attempting to throw his friends under the bus, but these friends were easy for detectives to clear as innocent. Detective Mellis found this as both odd and suspicious and only helped David solidify his position as the primary suspect. And he fucking just, you guys doesn't have very much longer to live, and he just... Why would he do that? Uh, it's supposed to be medical issues. He's got some really bad medical issues. He's telling you that? He's yeah, he's told that? That. yeah, yeah, he's telling you that. You don't know if it's true, though? Don't know anything, no. Just he, know he has a bad, bad brown problem. And this is the dude? I showed you a picture of him. Yep, right? yep. And he's the dude that was supposed to be... was locked up from, like, that day, that night. That night, he came over that night got 60 bucks for me, and it's supposed to be got arrested. That night meaning what? The night that Jamie's was no longer around. He disappeared. The ninth or whatever, yeah. The day that Jason went to jail. The same day that Jason went to jail, he supposedly went to jail. According to himself. For, yeah, for domestic violence, yeah. Against his ex. He, he was a Bothell? Uh, Redman, I guess. I'm oh, sorry. Does he have a, a wife and a boy? I saw some pictures on Facebook. Yeah, he has a son and his ex-wife. Was he sleeping with Jamie at any point? Not that we know. Who's been sleeping with Jamie? Don't know. No. I hate to ask the question, but I gotta ask the question. Don't know. Supposedly she wasn't even sleeping with Jason. Had they been dating? Or, yeah, uh, supposedly they've been dating and she had me given a reaction or whatever. That was one of the things we fought about that day, that, that the cops all came. Yeah, I suppose we had her tied up and shit because she was claiming that Jason came in, you know, that Jason took it from her that night. You know, she, she was... Just, I mean, I couldn't believe half the words that she was saying. You know, so I didn't take it. You know, all I know is that Jason was playing games, and Jamie, all this brown, is all tends to brown, what I take chocolate up as. These guys are fucking, they don't care about anything but themselves, and it's all just this brown, you know, bullshit. Jason said he was going to quit work, and he was going to come home, we're going to deal with this. Because I was telling my girlfriend, you know, he's fucking playing games, babe. I don't know who to believe. You know, Jamie... I tend to believe my sister because in the, in the heat of the moment, when I fucking look her in the eye and I fucking drill her, you know, tell me fucking what's going on here, James. I can trust and believe that my sister's telling me the truth. She points to him. Jason. It's all Jason. Mm -hmm. So that's fucking, you know, I, and, then, and I confronted Jason and he was going to come home and deal with it. But then, but then uh, you know, Jamie flipped the, the whole script around and said me being pissed off at Jason and was going to deal with Jason. She claims she's going to take a bunch of pills. You know, and that's when the whole the whole picture came out. You know, I had her in the. Uh, and then Jason's popped the night of the ninth, or the day of the ninth. Is that right? 
No, Jason was popped that night. He comes home that night. Yeah, because the cops, the cops come, and uh, at this time I'm dealing with my sister. She's in the bathtub. The whole time I'm thinking that she's uh, taking a bunch of pills, and I know she. I don't know what pills she takes, but I know she gets some gnarly fucking stuff. So I'm not sure. You know, I went from rage to empathy here, and I'm and and and, and I'm an addict. So of course I didn't call the cops. I should have called the cops, but I didn't. I get her to fucking throw up or I'm threatening to stick her, uh, I don't want to stick my finger down her because my little sister should bite my finger off so she's mad at me, you know what I'm thinking. Uh, I get a spatula, she said, no, I'll throw up. You know, I was going to stick a wooden handle or something down there and she said, no, I'll throw up. So she's acting like she's throwing up. I take her to the fucking shower. I get her in the shower. Uh, I'm on the phone with Carly, uh, dealing with her, going back and forth. Um, I'm on the phone with Carly and King County Sheriff's, or the Sheriff's are walking up and I say, the fucking sheriffs are walking up, and and at this time, and she's you know, and I'm talking to Carly, and then uh, they're walking up, and, and so I go to the back to the bathroom, and at this time, the bathroom door is not open anymore; it's it's partially shut, you know, a little bit, and uh, and and you know, like I said, I'm just I'm thinking back on it, and I'm tripping on it because of just how the layout was. I didn't think about much of it at the time, but I, I opened up the door, and this now here's this girl that was supposed to be took a bunch of pills. Um, was laying in there, uh, in her fully clothed. Um, at one point, the tub was filling up, and I had, and I realized that the, the uh, you know, the little stopper that stops the water was up. And I, you know, I, I put it down, and I, you know, slapped her on her arm, and said, "Not on my watch, James. You know, you fucking, you better stay with me. You know what the fuck is, you know." To deal with that, to to go in here to tell her that the sheriffs are here. This girl is like fully undressed in a, in, a, in a towel getting out of the shower like she just was taking a shower healthy like like taking a shower like, like yeah kind of like a little bit maybe groggy you know or, or you know still playing a part but i'm like the fucking cops are here i was tripping on it you know and, and and tripping on her and she's like well just go in your room and, and pretend you're sleeping i'll tell them i was in the shower and i said at that point i said no no i'll fucking do it i have no wants so i have no wants or warrants i'm gonna fucking see what the fuck's going on how did right? jason get arrested so when they came in, they, they, they asked me, you know, uh, do we step outside, sir, put your hands up. We got called it. There's a woman being held against her will here, tied up. I said, I immediately, they said, we got an anonymous call that an anonymous person received the text message. The only one I sent the text message to was Jason. And I fucking said, that's fucking Jason. That's playing, it's, it's, it backs up my theory that they're playing fucking games here. He's playing games. He's a manipulator here. <clears throat> They talk to Jamie, they come back out, that's when the one cop says, look, dude, are you a fucking, are you, are you a doctor? You going to med school? No. Next time your sister takes a bunch of pills, call my home, you know, and what they said to me. And I understood that. I mean, I'm an addict, but I fucking, you know, I get it. I get the fucking rights and wrongs and didn't want to fucking get my sister in trouble or anything, you know, and I didn't want to get, I mean, it's just fucking, that's, you know. I'm going to get some trouble for an LD around. You know, that's what I, I mean, it's just, you know, and then I told the cop, I understand, yeah, I would call, I mean, naturally, if she was, you know, in a fucking, if it was life or death, I really felt like it was like life or death, I would call the cops, but I didn't, I felt like we had it under control at the time. Apparently, she's fucking coming out of the shower like she just took a shower, so it seems like she's under control. They said, who's Jason? And I said, Jason, you know, and I knew he had a felony warrant, so I'm looking like an asshole, and they're like, come on, man. You live here? You say you live here? You don't know your roommate's last name? You know? You just look like an asshole. And I'm like, he's naughty. They're like, yeah, you're protecting him because he has a felony warrant? I'm like, whatever, you know? They're like, this is how it's going to go down. We're going to be waiting for Jason. We know he's going to be coming home. We suggest that you find something else to do. If he comes to this door and you get in a physical altercation with him, you will go to jail. We're telling you that right now. Yeah. Because we've been out here already, and you know the situation that's going on. If he comes home and you get into a physical confrontation with him, you will go to jail. Your best bet is to leave here. We can't tell you to leave your house, but we suggest that you leave here and call us when he comes here, and we'll get him. And that's what happened. Okay, so they popped him at the house later then. Right? Yeah. James was still alive and well. Yeah, and she took off in his car. And so... Uh... He's been out of the pictures from what, till the 25th or something? He was in for like 20 days or less than that, 15 days. Less than that, yeah, something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, and then Scott was like missing in action like the whole time. It was really weird. 
it's fucking really weird how we reflect back on things and you just try to put pieces together and you're just like... Okay, so let's talk about that hole for a second. The hole in question was also a red herring. Jamie's abusive boyfriend, whose name is Jason, spoke to detectives after getting out of prison. He stated that David had dug a large hole in the backyard before Jason was arrested and imprisoned. David had told Jason that the hole was for a pond, yet when Jason returned from prison, he found the hole was filled with dirt. Moreover, the DVR system for the security cameras pointing at the hole was missing. Jason suspected that David had killed Jamie and buried her in that hole. Detectives would later dig up said hole and find nothing. Another red herring. So he fucking digs a hole to fix a sewer, has some story about making a, a water feature to the, yeah, yeah. To the land owner, the, yeah. the lady who owns the place, even snaps some fucking pictures. Yeah. You know, so we know there's a hole there. Yeah. Now, of course, the place looks really nice. Who filled in the hole? I know you've been through this before with Detective Bartlett. Uh, me and Carly, pretty much. Yeah. That's a, so I do a shitload of landscape, kind of a side job. Yeah. I, know, I saw the fucking pictures of the hole when it was a hole. That's a shitload of dirt to have to put back. It Com- wasn't really... Compact it correctly and all no, that. It wasn't, no, 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 it was done correctly. Looks pretty flat. How, how was it done? How physically was it done? A uh, shovel and rakes. How long did it take? Uh, the whole time. It got done the day... I think it got done the day Jason got out. A little bit done. of a time or one... A little bit of a time. And... What did you put in a hole specifically? Uh, brush and trash. Brush, things will decompose. Or trash like fucking metal objects. No, there's Plastic yeah, there's trash there. in there. No, there's a big ass TV that got busted up in there. <laughs> TV? Yeah, big old jack, one of those old school fuckers, yeah. What made you want to fill in the hole, not Jason? What was the hurry to, to bury it back in? There wasn't a hurry. There wasn't a hurry, it was just that I thought the palm, we thought the palm, I thought the palm was stupid from the beginning. And uh, we wanted, Hope wanted to, from our understanding, Jason had that place for the next three years to work on it. And I had already done, we had already done, helped him with the plumbing. Uh, we've already done, helped him with a lot of stuff. And I figured, you know, why, me and Carly figured, why let this, this house go, why, why let somebody else get it when we could do the work? We could tear, I just did remodel for my boss that I was just at, so it wasn't like anything new, mm-hmm. you know? So the only thing that you put in the hall were some household garbage, uh, a fucking TV, anything else? No, there's just, uh, no, just, just wood debris, there's all kinds of wood debris. And shit. Yeah. It's well, not, it's not compacted, I mean, if, if you go to dig it up, it, there'd be a hole hole. And, and is that is that primary hole right above the sewer line or off to the side? Or no, it's off to the side. Um, east side or west side? Maybe the east side, I guess. But the, you have to look out the back door to be off to that side where the, where the pond was at. And east of the uh, sewer line? Yeah. Sewer line's right there, real close. Yeah, so the sewer line got fixed, right? You guys did that business? Yeah, it's got half-ass fixed. But, but fixed, no more. Yeah. And the burn pile, the primary burn pile for the backyard is, what, in that circular? There's a little circular thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what we made. Yeah. They had the burn pile was on top of that slab or something, I guess. Okay, and then this other burn pile you talked about, or the other burn site that you talked about right out front of the... It was right outside the fucking slider, dude. It was right next to the house. Like, what how retard... Much, how much shit are we talking about? What retard fucking puts... It's just, uh, it's just a bunch of wood debris. Just right there, fucking, like within. Like right there, fucking there. Yeah, you stupid. Like dangerous, stupid. Like, yeah, like, like the house could catch on fucking fire. Yeah, like that didn't fucking that didn't make no sense at all. Why would Jamie do that? Has she ever started a fire? That's exactly what I, my question was. That's what I was bitching about. Like, why the fuck would I mean? At this time, we're not even thinking about. Does Jamie do work? You know what I'm saying? Would she even? Be does Jamie there? do work? Yeah, Jamie was the nurse. Well, does she, I mean, does she go and fucking clean house? Clean debris. Oh, she's, or she lazy. She's kind of lazy. I mean, she's yeah. I mean, like all her characteristics over the last six months have been really not Jamie. So you know, I, I I can't believe that she'd be calling me for everything under the sun and then be over at my dad's telling him that I'm I'm beating on her. 
It's, it's, well, she did. I, I don't know why she did. I know. I can't, and I can't fucking wrap my head around it. My girlfriend can't wrap her head around it. I mean, did Carly and Jimmy get along? Somewhat. For the most part, I mean, they, they do. I mean, you know, I guess a week before, a week before fucking uh, this all went down, I guess Jason had hurt her or something. And Jamie, I mean, I guess Carly took some pictures for Jamie on her phone. Okay. Pictures of her, you know, bruised back or something. Because of what Jason did to her? Yeah. What's Jason doing? Jason looks like kind of a fucking up toast kind of a... Jason is, uh, no, Jason has a rap sheet of beating the shit out of women. Hmm. It was really, really bad. And her and Jason were together briefly? Yeah, somewhat. I thought they were together, but supposedly they weren't together, and she's with this other dude, Chris, and supposedly she's with this dude, fucking puppy. I don't fucking know. Okay, so to be crude about it, who do you think she was sleeping with in the last two months? I think she was sleeping with Jason. At the house? To be honest, yeah. Because she loves him or some fucking dope benefit or yeah, something some else? Some dope benefit. The house benefit. Yeah. Dope benefit. Just a place to live, a place to crash. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the, was she paying rent? She gets a lot of pills from the pharmacy, supposedly legitimately. Is she selling those out to pay, to just have spending money? Mm -hmm. Did she end up getting her supply and... So, I don't really know really anymore, know. sir. I, I think I'm not, we're not the dope cops. Yeah. Hey, she's fine. Yeah. If she calls her mother 10 minutes from now, we pack up our shit and go home. Nobody's going to be investigating anything, anything other than whether she's fucking alive or dead. So I don't give a shit if she's selling her foot pills. It, it, it clearly is relevant if she's been murdered or is missing. So do you know if she ended up even getting her pill supply for June? I don't know either. Do you have any pills that belong to her in the, in the no. house? Is there a stash of, uh, was it Vicodin? Is that what she gets? Uh, she has Vicodin, morphine, all kind of shit. Why? What the fuck? More? I have, she no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea, sir. And I just found out that she was on fucking psych meds, too. Just got a prescription, too. So, in your personal space in the house, is there going to be any uh, of that type of medication? I'm not talking about, like, one pill that you might have picked up here or there. In my personal stuff? Yeah. No. Or, or, or no, I don't know who pills. Carly, I don't know who Carly is at no. all. And she Carly doesn't pill talk her. No. No. Carly just had a friend that just died off fucking Brown. Yeah. They fucking really just frown against it. And what about Jason? Is he, you know, one of those Jason is Brown. Pills? Oh yeah. But that's not your thing. No, we don't do pills. Okay. So will there be any pills in your personal space at the house? No. How about Brown? No. A lot of guys don't want to admit the Brown. I get it. No, no, no. There should be eight. So you've admitted the mess. So to me, it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right? Exactly. But no. I mean, I fucking have done Brown. I think I told Jason you did. Yeah, I fucking did Brown one time. Uh, I don't know. It fucking sounds stupid coming out of my mouth, but. You gotta have a certain respect for drugs, I guess, you know, and you, you gotta know, I don't know, you, you gotta choose your poison, I guess, in other words, you know, you gotta choose your poison, and, and I fucking, when I was going through the divorce, when I was in the separation with my wife and, and stuff, I, you know, was using fucking meth and heroin, like, I'd been doing it for years, and I think it was the turtle I wanted to fucking you know, I wanted to go away or something, I felt like, I don't know, but I was like doing like 50, 60 laps, just shooting it up like I was a rock star, and mm -hmm. it lasted for about five weeks, and I knew that I got kids that wanted me around, and I didn't want to go that way, so I detoxed, took like two weeks, fucking just pain and torture, you know, it's fucking horrible, you know, and I was trying to relate that to Jamie, you know, it's fucking not good. Brown is not good. It sucks you in. Meth sucks you in. It's bad too, but I don't know. So 
What I hope to do is when we get your phone records and we'll do our business with the records that we need to do, uh, there'll come a time when I'm probably going to want to sit back down with you and go over the phone records with you, no matter how they look, whether they're damning looking or just fucking typical phone records a guy would have when he's in his house. So I don't want us to fucking end here as, as fucking enemies. I mean, it's your sister. We're going to work for you is the way I look at it until we determine that, you know, we're going against some person who killed her. Or if she fucking died on her own, so be it. But until that's proven, uh, we're all in the same boat. But if you put yourself in our position, you see exactly what we have to do. We have to clear the people around her from suspicion. And you're, unfortunately, very difficult to clear. Uh, some people are easy. We've already cleared a few people just based on the fuck they were in gym. I mean, like him or not, Nolte's easy to clear, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, that's a yeah. done deal. You know, he looks like a fucking suspect, of, you know, and I'm not for a lot of other reasons. Yeah, yeah. no, he, he tried to say his parole officer says he's a suspect, but I, I just don't see... Well, it's the physics. But, man. I mean, it's he's just, you know, like home. Jason keeps saying, it's almost like Scott fucking... It's almost like Scott thinks, like, he wanted him to do something, or I wanted him to do something. Well, would it's Scott, fucking scary. Would Scott have taken her on his own to be like, hey, dude, I took care of your problem he for you? He fucking might as well have. Or might have, might have, you know, I mean, that's what fucking Jason was sitting down and thinking about our conversation, which me and Jason had yesterday, and he's convinced that fucking Scott did something with her. I'm trying to be fucking more of the positive, you know, the will positive, you know, fucking my sister's going to call her mom up any fucking minute, you know, I want her fucking be gone and be hurt. I do too, but I, I, we all hope that she does it, but you got to be realistic, and it's time to be real realistic on this thing. It's been well over a month, and... Young women. Well, Scott's been somewhere. He's been doing shit, and he hasn't been accounted for. And so has Chris Daly, hasn't been accounted for. Is Scott's phone number in your uh, in your phone? Yeah. Under under what name? Scott. Just plain old Scott. Yeah. Is he only Scott in your phone? Uh. Yeah. I think so. Is your phone with you, or is it back? No, house? it's at the house. Or no, you guys got my phone. You guys got my phone. She's had my phone since the day I came here. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Can I get that back to you? Oh, wait. She's trying to copy it. Yeah, she can get it back to you. Yeah. But that was the deal, right? You were yeah, going to copy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to you. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about that tonight. What's Scott's number in there? Have you ever confronted Scott face-to-face? -face? What the no. fuck? What did, you, did you do something to my fucking sister? No. Do you feel comfortable doing that? I fucking... Uh, I put you on a wire, would you uh I mean, no offense, him? no offense, I'm gonna fucking uh, jam her up when I see him. Well if I put a wire on you and, and put you two together in a fucking restaurant or in a bar. Yeah. I'm gonna be jamming him up. Fuck yeah I will. So you're willing to go to that sort of Oh place? fuck yeah. I know where you're Oh fucking A. Oh fucking A. You know, and then Jason keeps saying that Scott keeps asking him, uh, let's go fishing. And and, and Jason doesn't understand why he keeps asking that because Jason doesn't fucking fish. Where does Scott fish? You don't know, but, but he made references of taking somebody down the river road. He hasn't gone down the river road in a long time or some shit, you know? And just fucking, how stupid. By uh, river road, do you think he's talking about Snohomish River Road? Or? I have no idea. He says, I haven't gone down the river road in a long time. I don't know. Half the, half the shit I heard this guy say, I thought was full shit. And now, so and now I'm fucking I'm thinking that fucking price been stupid the whole fucking time. Your sister sell uh, Scott pills, you know? They did brown together, I don't know if they thought she sold them pills. I know of uh Danny Craig, she sold pills to you. And uh I think uh Joe Lewis is uh his son's grandma. Lisa, Lisa, Tom, Tom Streeters. I think she sold pills to Tom. Other than that, I don't know who she sold pills to.
Where'd Jacob at? Your girlfriend? Uh, I'm talking to detectives somewhere else. Oh, yeah, she's in the So, uh, we are not the dope detectives. I think we've made that pretty damn clear, right? Yeah. Um, it's my understanding that Jamie did leave some pills behind. Is that correct? Oh, uh, there were some pills there. But I mean, did you sell a couple of them? To, to, I don't care to do. I'm not looking. I'm just yeah, we did sell some there. pills. But I mean, it was, there's yeah. Mm -hmm. What type were they? Uh, in their per thirties or something. Okay. Anything else? No. Did you sell anything yes. else to Jamie's? No. There were some uh, other pills that we found that was in her possession of her cell, but we didn't. There's an issue there still. Where specifically were the pills that she left behind? Uh, they're in her, they're in her, in the carport, I believe, now. Oh, the pills still, there's still some They're in a, they're in a fucking, uh, they're not in her name, though. They're in a dog's name. Like dog container, you know, pill containers. Like somebody just put them in there? Like she put them in there, yeah. Are those part of the prescriptions that she gets herself? I have no idea. I know. I knew. The only thing I knew that she took that she got was uh, was Vicodin. But I know that she's progressed to uh, supposedly she's getting morphine and and uh, and Valium or something. You know. So why did you feel? Why did you feel comfortable selling her pills? Uh, I don't know. I was figured it's what she would done to us. I don't know. This kind of lifestyle yeah. issue going it's, on right yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Fucking, she was out of our house. Yeah. 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 How much did you get, do you think, total? Uh, I don't remember. Like something significant, 300 bucks? 300 bucks? No. 100 bucks? 200 bucks, I think. Okay, so a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. The pills are gone. Yeah. Except for some that are, might be left? Well, there's some other kind of pills, too, that we, that we didn't think about. Later on, but we were to so. Do you know what they were? Or are they're they're in the no, they're in the mix of those dark pills. Okay, I think we asked you before. Is her purse at the house? I don't know. You said no before. Well, no, yeah, I don't know. So, honest to God, truth is, I don't know. I haven't seen it there. Right. Her purse or her phone was not there. We haven't seen it around. We. Clean up the house, the property, I mean, we haven't seen it around. You know, one of those. Okay. The, pill, the pill thing is, is uh, like I said, the, the other pills, they're all in a dog's name. Like, uh, one of the people that lived there before had a dog, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, but they're, you know, they're James pills, I guess. Are there something that people would want to buy? Yeah, I guess so. Whatever they are. Yeah. And like I said, we did just been outside our mind. Actually, I forgot about those because we don't really do pills. We don't. I just know somebody down the street that actually his girlfriend's a big, his new girlfriend is a big pop pop popper. So it just kind of came into, just kind of rolled into. Yeah, so an opportunity rolled up, and you just took the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I understand that. <sighs> Where specifically were the pills that you sold? In the kitchen. She would just leave the fucking shit out like that? Now, look, I'm guessing that whole house is full of people that don't trust each other, in a, in a sense. So why the fuck would you leave them all out in the kitchen? Um, it's pretty stupid, but I don't know if we don't totally not trust each other, or if we... I mean, it's... I don't know if that's the right word to use. It's not like we don't really trust each other, but it's not like we... Trust each other. I don't know. It's, it's, it's I'm gonna guess up. you guys don't trust each other because you're fucking in the lifestyle. It's fucked up. You know, the, the closest family members fucking rip off each other, even though they love each other. I mean, it happens I'm, all the time. When there's, you know, when there's fucking pills and dope involved, that's just that's more normal than not. I guess one option to, you know, if I gotta think of the fucking bad side here is that you sell. You sell or allow her pills to be sold because you know goddamn well she's not coming back. I.e. she's already gone. So it, it keeps coming back. How can we clear you from suspicion? I'm 
I think your phone records will go quite a ways to do go one way or the other. And either one of those things has got to break to clear me. So I don't I haven't done anything, and I fucking will keep repeat myself that I haven't done anything. Here's what I think happened to her. I mean, it's really only two scenarios. She either OD'd somewhere, most likely the house. Somebody freaked out and fucking had to get rid of her. Or uh, somebody uh, probably beat the fuck out of her and killed her. And I doubt she was stabbed or shot. I mean, I guess that she was probably fucking thumped, pummeled to death, massive head wound. And then she obviously somebody had to get rid of her. Whether that happened at your house or not, I don't know. But the crime lab's going to figure that one out. Yeah. In, in the end, I mean, David, you just, you're not passing the polygraph. The, the simplest polygraph we could design for a man like you in your position. One that you absolutely should pass if you... Just can you read those specific questions? Oh, yeah, I don't care. About, I want a lawyer. I don't want to talk about the polygraph anymore. Okay, what's well, the problem? You're not If you want to be done, to, you, we can yeah, be done. Yeah, I don't want to be done. It's, it's, I'll help you talk to Scott. Okay, because we still need to team up on this. We're going to find your sister. Right, yeah. I don't want to be fucking enemies with you. Yeah. Well, I'm not the guy. But you got to know where I'm, I'm thinking. Not the fucking you got to know all the thoughts in my head. Yeah, you got to know every step that I'm thinking. Yeah. you got to know every scenario that we're going to consider and rule in and rule out. And all, this is uncomfortable as fuck for you, I'm sure. You don't have to like us or whatever, but we're going to do it together. And the step of the polygraph was so fucking important to us that we, that's why we kept wanting to do it with you. So let me end this with kind of a um, overall reaching statement. David, is there anything that you haven't told us yet that you think is significant in this case? That you know damn that. well is significant Not that, that you've chosen to keep to yourself. Not that you no, except for fucking where is Scott and where is Chris? The whole time I fucking... You're talking to Chris Daly? Yeah. You know, like are this they guy... Pal, are they pals? What's their story? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't know, though. You know, I mean, they both do brown. I don't know who's friends in, in that in that social... They do know the same people, though. You know, they know this J-Dog dude. I don't even know who he is. Where in, where in Redmond is Scott? <laughs> he, just moved, he just moved to a gated facility, I guess. Uh, you know, one of those facilities that you got to... Like you gotta have money. Like you gotta have money to live in. Or? Yeah, yeah, he got an inheritance. He's yeah. got, he's got some kind of trust, and and supposedly that's how his wife is involved. His ex-wife, like he's gotten, he's beat the shit out of her or whatever. Uh, you know, they're no longer together. They divorced, from my understanding. But before they got divorced, he got an inheritance, and somehow they ruled her as the power. The, uh, the uh, executor? Basically, yeah, of, of all his findings or his money or something. Mm -hmm. So she gives him an allowance or something. Oh, that sort of scenario. Yeah, yeah. Even though yeah. she's his wife? Yeah, she's oh, his ex-wife now. Yeah, yeah. But so they live together because she has power over all of it. And so she, they're still living together, just not as men? Yeah, like, yeah. In South Lincoln somewhere? Yep. Like out by Avenue? Or? I have no idea. Jason knows. Is she, uh, is she on the brown team? Uh, no, not, not that I know of. As far as I know is that she was a uh, church town girl that he met years ago and he made her his wife. She didn't do much any day. But you don't know for a fact whether Jamie was sleeping with him? Uh, no, nope. Would it be surprising if she was? Did he want to? <laughs> Yeah, and she's been, I've always seen it, it would be her. surprising for my sister. It's, a lot of people that my sister has, has gone for lately has been a big surprise. So I guess no, it wouldn't be a surprise. It wouldn't be a surprise, but it wouldn't be. I just I don't see her. But but so you don't know. She manipulated, man. you know, Scott. I mean, she broke down. She manipulated one of my buddies and got a vehicle from him, and fucking and broke down out in, you know, out in Carnation or some shit. And we called Scott to go help her out, mm -hmm. and then Scott went MIA. So we're still trying to think of if, if he actually hooked up with her that night. You know, we don't know. Uh, Jason's convinced that 
that's the reason why he was answering, because he was with her. You know, he claims that she wasn't, because they just left my buddy's car on the side of the road on the opposite side of the, the traffic, so it would get, you know, so a cop would drive by and go, what the fuck's that? Turn it yeah. right there, you know? And then you get impounded, you know? Did it get impounded, yeah. ultimately? Yeah. So, Shell, that was, what's the time frame of that incident? That was like months before, I guess. Months before. A couple, couple months before. Before she was missing? Yeah. Yeah, that's when she first just met Jason. <coughs> okay. Is there a place you want to go today? Because it's going to be quite uh, a while. I'd like to get my wallet and... I don't know. I'm in a fucking restaurant or something. I mean, sometimes you there. just have a bag go to a movie or something for a fucking couple of hours. I'll figure out something. Okay, I think we can manage to get the wallet. So, again, you can't leave it you can't leave this with something that we're going to find the answer to and then prove you're lying about any even small aspects at this point, right? That's why I told you about the little fire. That's why, yeah. yeah. So, before we get, is there anything else that you know damn well we're going to figure out that you might as well talk about right now regarding your sister's behavior, somebody else's behavior, your behavior? No. Okay. Hey, man, everything, everything you say, I want to take it face value. I had a very difficult time, though, I guess, because of the polygraph. You don't want to talk about that anymore. I understand. But I actually came in here having every faith that you were going to have a uh, past polygraph and we move on. Yeah, I mean, thinking I would pass it. I knew it, so. Story of my life. Why, um, so my partner just texted me this uh, picture of a uh, note that you left on the garage for your girlfriend. It's a suicide note in my oh. reading of it. You said I don't want to talk anymore. Okay. Uh, but here's my only question. I don't need to dig into your emotional head. I know the cops talked to you about that the other day. The patrol cops went up and talked to you about being suicidal. And they did not They did not do a involuntary... Uh, there was nothing written. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So I guess my only question, was that note written... When was that note posted? Like fucking this morning, right before we no, showed up? No, that was, that was during that time. Okay, so that note's a few days old at least. Yeah. So it's nothing new. You forget about it, yeah. Okay. Do you still feel that way right now? No. Feel suicidal? No. Okay. Because I'm required to ask. I'm going to see the note today. I'm going to see the note before, obviously. Does Carly think you had something to do with James' disappearance? No. Okay. Because I... In the note, it almost looks like you're convincing her that you didn't have anything to do with it. And you no, I was just saying that I fucking didn't do anything. So, yeah, you know, I just wondered, does she doubt you? No, she doesn't doubt me. Okay. I gotta go to the bathroom. And then we'll get going, okay? Mm-hmm. Let me do the quest here for a second. You guys can chip that. Let me turn the recorder. Last time I saw any pictures of your sister. What's that? The last time I saw any pictures of your sister. Uh, yesterday. Pictures in your house and whatnot. David was released for the time being. The police took his phone, truck, and Xbox as evidence. David really wanted his Xbox back. Yeah, Christina, this is Dave Haggard. Give me a call back, please. We're trying to figure out when we can get our phones and, ah, would like to know when we can get our Xboxes back. They have nothing to do with anything. There's no reason why you should have took those. As the detectives worked, evidence pointing to David piled up. David had been violent toward Jamie in the past, beating her up in fights over drugs. Jamie had confided in multiple people that she was afraid of David, even stating that she believed David would kill her. Yet it is notoriously difficult to convict a suspected murderer without a body. Luckily, some gifted people can speak to the dead. One such person, Nicole Copeland, was frequently contacted by the spirit of Jamie Haggard. Nicole helps dead spirits pass over to the other side, but Jamie was unable to pass until her body was discovered. 
Although Nicole had no connection to the Haggard family or this murder case, she actively contacted both the police and the Haggard family to tell them what had happened to Jamie. She got the Haggard's family's phone number by searching through their Facebook accounts. According to Nicole, Jamie had been begging Nicole to find her body before it rains. Jamie had a neighbor who was infatuated with her and had been stalking her. Jamie was attacked by this stalker, sexually assaulted, and killed. The stalker then hid the body over a ravine near a river next to two trees. The detectives took this information, found Jamie's body, and arrested Jamie's killer. Those are three separate statements, by the way. The detectives took the information because they had to. It's part of their job. They took that information while rolling their eyes. And the detectives did find Jamie's body, though no thanks to Nicole. Two years after beginning the investigation, roadside cleaners came across a suitcase alongside a freeway. It contained a dismembered body. It was Jamie's body. With the new evidence from the suitcase and the GPS data from David's car showing that he was at the location of the suitcase shortly after Jamie had disappeared, the police were able to arrest Jamie's killer. David Haggard was thereafter sentenced to 15 years in prison. He will be 63 when he's released.